Welcome to ITTV for Form 4 Physics. The title of this lesson, Specific Heat Capacity. In the last lesson, we looked at heat, temperature, thermometers. In this lesson, we want to look at specific heat capacity. Now, the idea of heat capacity is the amount of heat that an object needs to absorb so that its temperature rises by one degree Celsius. The object must have a mass of one kilogram so that we can have a standard mass for comparison. Heat capacity, C, the amount of heat required to change its temperature by one degree. Now when we say heat capacity, we don't really care so much about the mass. Yes, we need to know the mass of the object, but we're not doing a standard test. So as long as the temperature of that material or object rises by one degree Celsius, and we know how much heat was required, we say that that was the amount of heat, the heat capacity, needed to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius. The amount of heat that must be supplied to increase the temperature by one degree Celsius for a mass of one kilogram of the substance. Specific heat capacity, Q equals MC theta, where Q is equal to the heat absorbed or heat released unit joule m mass of the substance unit kilogram theta temperature difference unit degree celsius si unit of c joule kg negative 1 degree celsius negative 1 so we get a formula for specific heat capacity which is q equals mc theta now you're going to be using this formula quite a lot during your calculations and during physics examinations now in order to find c the small c the specific heat capacity we move all the other values to the opposite side so we get the formula c equals q over m theta let me write this formula down for you on the board so we start with the original formula Q equals MC theta If we want to find the value C we move everything over therefore Q over M theta equals C and from here we get our units which is Joule kg negative 1 degrees Celsius negative 1 Joule kg negative 1 degrees Celsius negative 1 now let's go through an experiment where we find the specific heat capacity for a specific substance experiment aim to measure the specific heat capacity of aluminium apparatus immersion heater 50 watt aluminium block insulation jacket for aluminium block stopwatch DC power source connecting wires thermometer triple beam balance procedure weigh a block of aluminium so let's start with this first step here we have a block of aluminium and we have a triple beam balance which I'll use to weigh so I'm going to put the aluminium over here I'll remove the insulation jacket we'll use that later so now I need to weigh this now the weight is almost one kilogram so I'm going to start by placing a 500 gram weight at the edge over here I'll move the middle section up to here we've gone past so let's go back a notch to about here let's move this uh, that looks like we've gone too far so let's go back okay now we'll move the small one in the front
good. So now we've got the weight of the aluminium block, which is 500 plus 400, 900, 87 grams. So our mass is 987. Let's put this down on the board. So mass of aluminium block 987 grams we need to use it in kilograms so let's convert it straight away which is 0 0.987 kg that way there's no chance of making a mistake later on when you do your calculation let's go back to the slide put a little quantity of paraffin oil in the small hole and place the thermometer inside so let's take the heater the aluminium block let's place it back here we need to place its insulation jacket around it main function is to reduce heat loss to the surrounding so that our experiment is a bit more accurate now we take some paraffin oil and we place it in the small hole like so the reason is to allow heat conduction to be more efficient into the thermometer now before I put the thermometer in, I'm going to take a quick reading. It says 26 degrees, that will be my initial temperature. So I place this inside here. Let's put the initial temperature down on the board as well. I'm just going to use the short form for temp. Initial temperature, we've got 26 degrees Celsius. Now back to the slide. Place the immersion heater in the bigger hole and then connect the heater to the transformer. Next, switch on the transformer power supply and start the stopwatch. So, over here we have a stopwatch. So, I'm going to do both at the same time, turn on the power supply and the stopwatch. Now, what we do is, we measure the temperature rise after 5 minutes. Now, 5 minutes are up, what we need to do is, allow the temperature to settle and record the highest temperature. The temperature is... 44 degrees Celsius so let's go up to the board final temperature now from here we should be able to calculate our temperature difference which is theta sorry just clean this up 44 minus 26 which equals 18 degrees Celsius now with all of this information we should be able to calculate the specific heat capacity of aluminium let's do the calculation over here Q equals MC theta so we know Q over M theta equals C so C equals Q which is the power supply which will be 50 watt times 5 minutes which we change into seconds which will be 5 times 60 which is 300 seconds divided by the mass which is 0 0.987 multiplied by theta the temperature change which is 18 and if you do this calculation, you should get a value of 844.3. So we get 844.3. Don't forget the units. Joule, kg minus 1, degree Celsius minus 1. And that is very close to the actual value. The real value is 900. But it's very hard to get the real value because there's always going to be some heat 
lost to the surroundings. We can try to make it a bit better by putting a jacket over the top, put a jacket at the bottom to reduce the heat loss, which will possibly give us an even more accurate reading. So, remember, the mass was 987 grams. The time taken was 5 minutes or 300 seconds. Initial temperature 26, final temperature 44. And then we did the calculation, which was C equals Q over M theta, which was 15,000 divided by 0 0.987 times 18. And we got the value 844. 0.3 Joule kg negative 1 degrees Celsius negative 1. Question What does specific heat of copper 390 Joule kg negative 1 degrees Celsius negative 1 mean? So, what does it mean when I say the specific heat capacity of copper is 390? What does it mean? Remember just now. When we did the calculation and we worked out this value, 844 Joule kg negative 1 degrees Celsius negative 1, what did it mean to us? Have you written down an answer? Well, let's have a look. 390 Joule of heat needs to be supplied to 1 kilogram of copper to produce a 1 degree Celsius temperature increase. Remember, specific heat capacity is the amount of heat you absorb so that your temperature of your substance, which is hopefully one kilogram, will rise by one degree Celsius. A substance with a small value of specific heat capacity heats up and cools at a faster rate, sensitive to temperature changes. Example. A thermometer has low specific heat capacities, so it enables heat to be easily absorbed and released even when small quantities of heat are involved. So when a substance has low specific heat capacity, it only needs a small amount of heat to create a temperature change. Also this material with a low specific heat capacity will cool down very fast. Like we said, an example would be a thermometer that heats up quickly but then allows its temperature to also drop quite quickly. Metal like iron, steel, copper and aluminium is used as pots and pans because they can be quickly heated up when there is only small heat absorption. So another example would be metals. We know metals are good conductors of heat. Most materials that are good conductors of heat have a low specific heat capacity. They heat up very quickly for just a small amount of heat absorption. A substance with a high value of specific heat capacity heats up and cools at slower rate, require more heat to raise its temperature by a specific amount. Poor conductor of heat, handle of pot. A substance with a high value of specific heat capacity can absorb a great amount of heat without a high increase in temperature. For example, water absorb a great amount of heat in a car radiator. Water is used as a cooling agent in a car radiator. So when we talk about materials with high specific heat capacity, understand two main things. One, the material's temperature will rise slowly when heated. Also, it will cool much slower. Secondly, the material will absorb more heat for a specific temperature rise. It will also, once again, release this heat very slowly. Now, two applications or two uses of this are in the handle of a pot. You don't want it to become hot while you're cooking. So obviously, it heats up much more slowly. The temperature rises very slowly. And the other example was the water that we use in the car radiator. It absorbs much more heat. 
which means it allows to cool the engine more efficiently. Applications of specific heat capacity. Low specific heat capacity. The pot becomes hot very quickly. This enables quick cooking of the food in the pot. So here we have a pot. Now, as you can see with this pot, it's made of stainless steel, but the bottom layer is made of copper. Copper has a lower specific heat capacity than the steel. The copper will have a faster or higher temperature rise. So the heat will be sent straight through from the bottom into the food at the top. So, because it's got a lower specific heat capacity, the temperature of the copper will rise faster than the steel. Large specific heat capacity. The handle will not become too hot when heat is absorbed. So once again, if we go back to our pot, over here you will see that the handle is made out of a slightly different material. This is plastic, which has a high specific heat capacity. Because it's a poor conductor of heat and has a high specific heat capacity, the temperature of the handle will rise slowly in comparison with the pot. So, even though you are cooking, you are still able to hold the handle and not burn yourself. Whereas if you were to try to hold the pot, you probably would burn your hand. For sure, you would burn your hand. So here is a clear example of the use of high specific heat capacity and low specific heat capacity in the pot. Sea breeze. Land has a smaller specific heat capacity than sea. Faster increase in temperature. Land is warmer than the sea. Air above the land is heated up and rises. Cooler air from the sea moves towards the land as sea breeze. So this is an example of specific heat capacity affecting us in our daily life. Land has a low specific heat capacity. So it heats up faster, the temperature rises faster. The sea water, temperature rises more slowly. Now, like we said, because the land has got a higher temperature, the air above it gets heated up quickly and rises. So cooler air from the sea blows in to replace it. This is called the sea breeze. Now, the absolute opposite occurs during the night. Land breeze. At night, heat is lost from the land and the sea. Sea has a larger specific heat capacity. So sea is warmer than land. Warmer air above the sea rises. Cooler air from the land moves towards the sea as land breeze. So basically here, the opposite is occurring. Because remember, if you have a low specific heat capacity, you heat up quickly, your temperature rises fast, but you also cool much faster, your temperature falls faster. So during the night, the land temperature falls faster than the sea. The sea is warmer. Air above the sea now gets heated and rises. So air from the land blows towards the sea to replace the air that's rising up. So we get a land breeze. So here the specific heat capacities of water and land basically act to create breezes moving in and moving offshore. Once again, without our knowledge, specific heat capacity is affecting our daily lives. Let's try a question. When an electric heater is supplied with an electric power of 2 kilowatt to heat 4 kilogram of water in one minute, calculate the increase in temperature of the water. Specific heat capacity of water is 4200 joule kg negative 1 Celsius negative 1. Assume there is no heat loss to the surrounding. So let's do this calculation. We're using the formula Q equals MC theta. Let's do it over here. We'll just remove this. We've got the formula written up here for us already. Let's just get the board a bit clean. So what are the values that we have? We're told that our power supply is 2 kilowatts. So that is 2000 watt 
And the time was one minute. Change to seconds is 60 seconds times 60 equals the mass which is 4 kilograms times specific heat capacity of water which is 4200 times theta let's just draw a line down here shall we we are looking for theta so let's move these values over to the other side so we get 2000 so we get one two zero 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 divided by four times four two zero zero equals theta so if you get your calculators out and quickly do this calculation what value do you get have you done it So we get a value of theta, which is a temperature rise of 7.14 degrees Celsius. Next question. 500 gram of copper at temperature 40 degrees Celsius is mixed with 1 kilogram of water at temperature 80 degrees Celsius. If there is no heat loss to the surroundings, what is the final temperature when thermal equilibrium is achieved by the mixture of water and copper? Specific heat capacity for copper, 390 JKG negative 1 degrees Celsius negative 1 and for water, 4200 Joule KG negative 1 degrees Celsius negative 1. Now here is a typical calculation where you need to be aware of an uh, idea which is the heat lost by the water is equal to the heat gained by the copper block once again we are assuming there is no heat loss to the surrounding let's do the calculation up here I'll just erase this part over here and we'll go through this calculation slowly so that you are clear with it. Now remember what I said, heat lost, so let's do that over here, heat lost equals heat gained. Well we can simplify this by using the formulas over here, M1 C1 theta 1 equals M2 C2 theta 2. So for here we we'll put in the values for water. The mass was 1 kilogram, 1. Specific heat capacity, 4200. And the temperature change. This is the key here. Remember, water had a higher temperature, which means its temperature would have fallen. So it'll be 80 minus theta. That is the final temperature at thermal equilibrium. Let's do it on the other side. Here for our copper, we had 500 grams of copper which would be 0 0.5 times the specific heat capacity of copper which is 390 times now in the case of copper it started at 40 degrees Celsius but its temperature was going to go up so the final temperature at equilibrium will be higher so it will be theta minus 40 now we sort of do the whole calculation so Using a calculator over here, we do 1 times 4200, which is 4200. 4200 times 80, 4000, 4200 times 80 equals, all right, we get a value of 336. 336000 minus 4200 times theta. 4200 theta. Now we do the same thing on this side. So let's just turn this back on. 0 0.5 times 390. This gives me 195. 195 times theta is 195 theta. 195 times 40, slightly more tricky. So 195 times 40 equals 7800 minus 7800 now we go on to the next step 
What we want to do is move the theta values, which is this value over here, over to this side and take this value over to this side. So we end up with 3, 3, 6, 0, 0, 0, plus 7, 8, 0, 0, equals 1, 9, 5, theta, plus 4, 2, 0, 0, theta. Now, we try and solve this, yeah? We add these values together, plus 3, 3, 6, 0, 0, 0, equals, we get 3, 4, 3, 800, equals, now we add the two theta values together, I'll just quickly do that, 4,200 plus 195 equals 4395 theta. What we want is theta, so we bring this value over, so we get 343800 divided by 4395, this equals our theta. So let's do this last calculation, 343800 0, 0, divided by 4395 equals 78, so we get a value here, I'll write it up here, 78.22 degrees Celsius, oops, Celsius. And that's our final temperature at thermal equilibrium. So understand how to do this calculation, just put this calculator down. Remember, M1C1 theta1 equals M2C2 theta2. Make sure that the key things, that the highest temperature is always in front. So in this case, AT is higher than thermal equilibrium. Over here, thermal equilibrium temperature would be higher than 40. Make sure you do that and then the calculation should be quite straightforward. Summary, heat capacity, heat needed to raise temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Remember specific heat capacity is the heat required to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of substance by 1 degree Celsius. High specific heat capacity, temperature rise and fall quickly. Low specific heat capacity, temperature rise and fall slowly. Make sure you have ideas of applications of specific heat capacity for both high and low specific heat capacity. These are the common questions that come out in examinations. That's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.